Several great kidney spices and herbs aren't going to be on this list because they're just not good in a tea. Like garlic, not very tea worthy. Also, kidney health can cover a wide variety of different things. So you're going to want to pay close attention to the honorable mention list that I talk about later in the video. For now, here's number 10, goldenrod. <laughs> It's a bird. It's a bird. It's a bird. Oh god, Sam's got him. No! <sighs> Sam! Stop! Hold on. Hold on, buddy. Uh, there you go. Get on out. Uh, where was I? Right, you're gonna find goldenrod in lots of different tea blends that you see out there for kidney health. What it really does is help to prevent or treat kidney stones, stop inflammatory diseases, and help the urinary tract to stop infections. And this is the first of many herbs on this list that are known as aquaretics. Sounds like a weird aerobics thing. Aquaretics? Which is a diuretic which helps to release water from your system, but without the loss of vital electrolytes. And besides helping to soothe and protect your kidneys, it has little to no side effects. And the only real downside is that, like many of the herbs on this list, it's suggested not to take once you actually have kidney disease because it can interfere with the medications that to help with kidney disease. You know, you get it. I am not talking straight today. This is what happens when you have a kid or a cat that gets you up at 5.30 in the morning. Cleavers. Is it really the best name for a helpful herb? Whenever I hear it, I think of the chopping tool. Meat Cleaver Massacre. I guess it's a lot better than some of its other names like Sticky Willy. Cleavers is a powerful herb that can help eliminate harmful fibrous tissue from the kidneys as well as fight against the calcifications that cause kidney stones. And a little sidebar, if I was doing a video on the lymphatic system, cleavers would be way up there as well because it's one of the best ones out there for lymphatic drainage. Just what everybody needs. Lymphatic drainage. Might be, but doesn't sound terribly interesting, does it? Cleavers is another one of the aquaretics which doesn't have that many side effects. Uva ursi is an astringent that can soothe the urinary tract and research also shows it's great at cleaning toxins out of your kidneys. Uva ursi contains arbutin which helps to maintain a solid microbial balance in the kidneys. It helps with UTIs and overall kidney health and you'll often find it taken with other herbs like marshmallow root to help boost its efficacy. Yes, I said efficacy. The tough thing about uva ursi is that if taken over a long period of time, it can actually cause liver damage in some people. Hydrangea has long been used by indigenous Americans for kidney health. A 2017 study found that hydrangea offered protection against kidney damage. Another animal research showed that hydrangea lessened kidney damage in animals and that it had a great anti-inflammatory effect on kidney cells damaged by chemotherapy. Hydrangea tea also helps prevent the creation of calcium oxalate, AKA kidney stones. The main knock against it is there haven't been many human studies for its effectiveness. Lousy humans. Nettles, on the other hand, have lots of quality research showing how it can help flush out toxins from the system, fight bacteria, and help with inflammation. Are we sensing the theme yet today? Kidneys, aquaretics, very simpatico. Nettle tea can help prevent the need for dialysis by increasing urination, enhancing blood purification, dissolving gallstones, and controlling infections. The odd thing about stinging nettles is they're also high in potassium, which sounds like a good thing, but it can cause problems for those who already have kidney disease, because part of the problem of having kidney disease is you can't get rid of all the potassium properly. Dandelions. How'd they make this list? They're just damn weeds. You know I'm kidding, right? Dandelion tea is considered one of the best aquaretic herbs out there, and it can help to cleanse the kidney and prevent kidney stones with the best of them. To learn more, watch my video about the benefits of dandelion next. Dandelion tea also has the distinction of being one of the best tasting herbs on this list. Feel free to argue with me in the comments. I actually set that up for argument. I like nettles better. Don't tell the dandelion. The name Pipsesawa actually comes from the Cree word meaning to break into small pieces, which makes sense as Pipsesawa tea can help break down kidney stones. Now one story I came across there was a nurse whose husband was taking medication for kidney stones and it was causing their medical bills to skyrocket, as happens in America. Pipsesawa tea helped his kidney stones and saved them tons of money. That's what I call feeding two birds with one skull. Yeah. Another plus of Pipsesua is that it has some of the same chemicals as Uva Ursi, but because it's milder, it doesn't have a lot of the same side effects. While it is considered milder, long-term overuse of Pipsesua can cause various problems like tinnitus, vomiting, confusion, and seizures. 
So just don't use too much of it for too long. Several studies have found that Sambong can help reduce calcium oxalate crystals, which according to my wife is indeed a fancy way of saying that it helps with kidney stones. Thank you for keeping me humble. The Philippine National Kidney and Transplant Institute recommends Sambong as it helps delay or avert renal failure and can even help delay dialysis or kidney transplants. Sambong is another ultra-powerful diuretic that can increase a person's urine volume by as much as 60%. Yeah, that's a lot of... I have nothing else to say about that. I guess I've run out of good urine jokes at the moment. Let me know if you have any in the comments, I guess. We've already talked about how diuretics and aquaretics with kidneys, very simpatico. So let's move on to Chancha Pachanga. What? Chancha Piedra? A Chancha Pachanga? I could teach a kid. Chancha Piedra is possibly the best herb for kidney stones. And it's so good at it that it's earned the nickname Stonebreaker. Chancha Piedra in Spanish actually translates to Stone Crusher, which sounds a bit cooler and tougher if you ask me. Chancho Piedra. Several studies have shown how Chancho Piedra can reduce oxalate and uric acid levels, both of which are primary causes of kidney stones. Add to this its ability to remove toxins and help overall kidney health. Boom! Chancho Piedra rules! Okay, 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 okay. Right out of the gate here, I gotta mention cranberry, because when it comes to urinary tract infections, there may be nothing better than cranberry. The problem is, is that for overall kidney health, cranberry just couldn't quite stick up. Also, there's some studies that say cranberry can lead to the formation of kidney stones. So that's bad. So yes, cranberry could be great for you and can make a great case for being in the top 10, but I got it here. Now as kidney health can cover a variety of areas like detoxing, antispasmodics, anti-inflammatories, antimicrobials, and other properties that can help your kidneys do their job better, this means there's this monster list of other herbs that could be your number one herb for you. What knocked them out of the top 10 for me were things like lack of research, side effects, and the ones listed in red are herbs to avoid if you are already have kidney disease according to the National Kidney Foundation. Genus Rimania is one of 50 basic herbs that has been used in Asian medicine for millennia. In China, it's not only been used for kidneys, but liver, heart, diabetes, and much more. Several animal studies affirmed Romania tea's benefits for overall kidney health. Plus, there's a variety of studies that show that Romania helps with specific kidney problems like nephrotic syndrome and lupus nephritis. There's even research showing help at there's even research showing how it helps increase renal blood flow, helps chronic kidney inflammation, adrenal fatigue, and kidney damage. Romania tea also helps reduce renin, which is beneficial for people who have high blood pressure caused by kidney disease. And don't let the fact that it's called Chinese foxglove fool you. It's not deadly or anything like that or poisonous. It can have some other side effects but it's not that bad. Ready to learn more about nettle tea? Watch this video next. Or those dandelions are here too. Dandelions. Please be kind, take care of each other, and hopefully one of these herbal teas will keep your kidneys happy and healthy.